Eleanor Anton, Blood of a Poet Box, and Wittgenstein's Aesthetics. Eleanor Anton is an American filmographer, performer, and installation artist associated with the conceptual art movement. She was making expressionist paintings in New York when she married her husband, David Anton, a poet, an art critic, who often invented creatives over to discuss and debate. Between 1965 and 1968, Eleanor Anton was inspired by these debates to compile her first conceptual artwork, Blood of a Poet Box, literally. The work consists of a wooden slide box filled with 100 glass slides containing the blood samples of 100 poets and an ordered specimen list. The piece references Jean Cocteau's 1930 surrealist film La Sang d'un Poète, Blood of a Poet, the first in a trilogy of critically acclaimed and technologically groundbreaking films. Devenir une, toi-même, encore la gloire, toujours la gloire. The premise of the film is an exploration of the suffering of an artist. The content is best summed up by the quote by Cocteau himself. Poets shed not only the red blood of their hearts, but the white blood of their souls. Blood of a Poet Box by Anton functions as a literalist parody of this very romantic notion of artists as creative souls that imbue their work with their blood, sweat, and tears. Among the poets who donated specimens for her project are Allen Ginsberg, Barbara Guest, Yvonne Rayner, Lawrence Ferlinghetti, and Jerome Rothenberg. Wittgenstein was a 20th century Austrian philosopher who was primarily concerned with mathematics, the mind, language, and communication. He was a professor at Cambridge and published a single, extremely short text titled The Tractatus Logico Philosophica. Wittgenstein also claims that miscommunications stem from misunderstanding the language game that the conversation takes place under. A language game is essentially a collection of mental associations, rules, and processes that govern how each person contextualizes information that they receive in a conversation. In short, Wittgenstein emphasized the importance of conscious communication and urges people to become more clear with their language. Ludwig Wittgenstein had an interest in and practiced music, literature, and architecture. There is only one comment on aesthetics in the Tractatus, and it is that ethics and aesthetics are one and the same. In his 1938 lectures, he opened with the statement, the subject, art, is very big and entirely misunderstood. By this he means, the field of aesthetics is inherently a part of all of philosophy. The effect of general aesthetics on humans is greater than the effect of art on humans because there is less art than there are aesthetic inclinations. The world is densely packed with manifestations of the aesthetic sense or the aesthetic interest, while the number of works of art is much smaller than the number of manifestations of the aesthetic sense or the aesthetic interest. 
A definition of the aesthetic would need to acknowledge the ephemeral nature of art and find a way to eliminate misunderstanding of the aesthetic. This misunderstanding comes from the attempt to address conceptual questions with empirical answers. The conceptual satisfaction that humans seek through art is uniquely different from the empirical experiment. Therefore, the traditional method of philosophical inquiry, where one seeks to define something by its essence, leads to confusion because classifying what is an artwork is more interested in excluding artworks than broadening the perception of the aesthetic sense. An example of this idea is the word beauty. If one looks at the actual use of the word beauty in relation to the aesthetic, it becomes clear that the use of the word does not match the formal definition of the word. By saying that an artwork is beautiful, someone is expressing approval, not a quantitative trait of the artwork. An artwork's role within a language can be understood when we view art. When we mentally process artwork, our mind puts the sense of it in comparison to other works of art. Our interpretations are infected by our attitudes and emotions. We create a sort of mental map that relates to other works from the artist, other works within the cultural context, and themes related to the work. To describe a set of aesthetic rules fully means really to describe the culture of a period. So each culture, place, and time follows its own language game, and an entirely different game is played in different ages. In asserting this, Wittgenstein is arguing for diversity and context sensitivity. In order to get clear about aesthetic words, you have to describe ways of living. We think we have to talk about aesthetic judgments like, this is beautiful, but we find that if we have to talk about aesthetic judgments, we don't find these words at all, but a word used something like a gesture accompanying a complicated activity. When we try to evaluate art as a set of parameters, we are robbing ourselves of all of the nuance of the aesthetic experience in order to simplify it. Wittgenstein's aesthetic theory can handle this artwork. Anton uses sensitivity to the context of language in her piece. She uses deliberately multi-layered, subversive language to allude to a larger concept, and she is working within an art practice which challenges the aesthetic understanding in general. Anton's conceptual work is a good example of the conscious communication that Wittgenstein urges us to. Because of this, Wittgenstein is one of the only philosophers I found who could handle the topic. One, because he is willing to let art continue to be big, mysterious, and unscientific, and partly because I view his pleas for clarity of language as a predecessor to the ideas of the conceptual art movement, where playing with language and perception reflect back on and critique our own broader humanity. In conclusion, the artwork plays with language in order to convey its concept. Anton weaves words together poetically to change the meaning of something otherwise commonplace, and this is extremely reflective on the connotative nature of language and expression. Wittgenstein's aesthetics can be applied to Eleanor Anton's Blood of a Poet Box, and through his broad definition of the aesthetic sense, we can conclude that the work is indeed a work of art.